Go ahead. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live stream home group uh, Bible studies. Glad that you were able to tune in with us tonight as we are continuing um, to meet like this. Uh, we do miss everybody. We do see some of you at church, um, but there's a big group of you that um, don't come to our church. You go to other churches. And so uh, just uh, know that you are missed. Uh, we love you guys. And uh, we just hope that you're blessed tonight. Um, if you have any prayer requests, uh, we ask you to send those in um, through the Messenger app or um, however you guys get it across. I'm not familiar with Facebook and everything on it, but however you guys have been doing it, just continue to do that. Um, go over some announcements here tonight. I want to remind you, if you do go to Praise Chapel Baldwin Park, um, our home church, I um, want to remind you that tomorrow uh, we are continuing as we have been in the month of July. Uh, we have designated our Saturdays um, to beautifying the house of the Lord. And so uh, tomorrow um, should be our final Saturday um, we, we have to, to complete uh, the work that we've already started. Uh, we've replaced a lot of wood already, um, scraped the buildings, sanded them, um, done a lot of stuff there. Uh, we've already painted um, seven-eighths of our main building and uh, just about an eighth left to do, very small portion. And then we've got to hit the trim and then our other children's building will be spraying that tomorrow and then painting the trim on that. And uh, the black fence um, that we've been out there and everybody's been just uh, taking a portion on, uh, we appreciate um, all of your efforts. It's looking great. I know you guys have been out there in the hot sun uh, with a roller just rolling that wrought iron, man. And just God bless you. And so we want to remind you, um, tomorrow come on out and finish up that fence and uh, just a lot of little details we have now to complete the projects. And so um, we are meeting there at the church at 7.30 for prayer, and then immediately at 8 o'clock uh, we are starting um, the work. We will be there at 6.30, uh, for those of you that are early risers and you want to get there at 6.30, uh, we will be there already um, getting everything prepared and set up. And so if you want to come a little bit early and uh, beat the heat a little bit, um, 6.30 a.m. we will be there at the church. And so, um, also, ladies, um, don't forget tomorrow there is a women's discipleship at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it will be on the Facebook um, as well, live streaming. And uh, Sister Gloria told me to let you ladies know that if you want to be a part of the church um, cleanup tomorrow, um, you can catch the message later. And so, uh, you know, this is the, the one time that we're saying, hey, um, come on to the church and watch the message later. Usually we want you to watch it live. Um, but if you're torn between the two, uh, we encourage you to come to the church tomorrow because we can use all the help we can get. Um, but if you are not able to make it uh, due to many different reasons, um, the women's discipleship will be beginning promptly at 10 a.m. So I want to uh, encourage you um, to be a part of that women's discipleship. Uh, then, of course, we do meet. We are meeting at our church because we have um, purchased some, some canopies and we've purchased extra chairs. Uh, we have a big piece of um, new cement outside and we're able to, to distance ourselves. We do encourage you to continue to wear your masks and that your temperature will be checked when you come in. And so we're just there outside. Uh, we do start prayer at nine o'clock in the morning and then at 9.30 we begin with our worship and our singing on, praising on to the Lord. And then immediately at 10 o'clock, we begin our services as far as getting into the word of the Lord. And so um, <coughs> just encourage you uh, to come out and to um, just be a part and come and join us. Maybe your church hasn't opened yet, maybe uh, for different reasons, and, uh, and you want to come out. Um, it's even okay if you feel that you want to distance yourself a little bit further. And uh, because we do have a fence there, we have a, you know, a good-sized property. Um, for the amount of people that, that, that congregate where we're at. And so even if you feel that you want to be a little bit further out and you want to bring, you know, a small canopy, an umbrella, your own chairs, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, we just uh, want to let you encourage you um, to, to come out. Amen? And so, oh, then also, uh, we do have a men's discipleship this Monday. It is going to be a live, in-person men's discipleship starting at... 7:30 this Monday night, and so men, um, I know it's been it's been a, a few months uh, since we've gathered, and so uh, here we go. 
and uh, we're going to just have a good time uh, there in, in, in the Lord. And so I encourage you, invite somebody on out. Um, you know, the, well, we need more right now. We need more. And, and there's going to be plenty of room. Uh, you'll be able to be distanced. So don't worry about that. That's, you know, the, the size of the church and the amount of men that, that come to our men's discipleships. Plenty of room uh, for us to know that we are safe. And again, um, you know, never feel, um, if you feel that you want to distance yourself, but you want to be a part of the live worship, come on down. Nobody's going to tell you, you know, normally in normal services, you know, we got the ushers um, that are just, you know, seating everybody and, and kind of directed into a certain area. But with everything that's going on, uh, we want you to feel comfortable and we want you to feel safe. And so if that means that you want to be, you know, distanced a little bit or, you know, there's not going to be any problems with that. And so uh, come to the house. If you haven't been in the house of the Lord in, 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 in live worship in a while, man, we just encourage you uh, because, man, um, it's exciting. Um, I haven't missed any yet because... Um, you know, so so I don't know what it's like to to to, to go such a long period of time during this moment um, because um, you know there's a certain amount of us that, that, that need to be there at the church and so just encourage you if that's something that you've been missing to just come on out to the house of the Lord, Amen. I remind you, continue and giving and remain faithful to your home church uh, wherever you congregate at. Um, don't look at this as an opportunity that, hey, man, I ain't going, so I ain't giving to the Lord. Um, just a, a, a time just to see uh, where is your trust. And I know there's a lot going on with, with you know, jobs and people being laid off, people being furloughed, um, people being let go, business is shutting down. And, uh, and so what an opportunity to really show that your trust isn't in your job and your trust isn't in your abilities, your trust isn't in the government. Um, but your trust is in the Lord, and know um, that God um, will just uh, meet every need. I'll tell you, um, you know, God's just been um, blessing me um, with an abundance of work, you know, just continually, 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 and that's because my trust is, you know, in, in the beginning I was thinking, well, uh, people are not going to want to do any construction on their homes, um, but it's actually been quite the opposite, and everybody's been uh, really just, and so, you know what, just trust in the Lord in whatever you do, however however your income comes in, and know that God is going to provide. Amen. Uh, we're going to get ready to go before the Lord uh, this night. A few things we want to pray for. Um, Brother Sal asked us to lift him up. He hasn't been um, feeling good lately. It's not COVID or nothing like that. It's just something where he, he gets up in the morning, just doesn't feel um, like himself. So we want to lift him up tonight. He does, uh, as he goes to, to a doctor's appointment that he has scheduled, uh, we just want to pray um, that they would, you know, pin down whatever the issue is. It would be something uh, minor and not anything major with that brother Sal. Uh, we want to pray for Donald's uncle Gilbert, who they found blood clots in his lungs. And so we want to lift um, him up and just pray um, that, that God would intervene on that situation. Um, for Sister Sue, we want to lift up her pastor, Pastor Raul Reese, uh, who has COVID. Um, but he doesn't have any, any extreme symptoms or anything like that. And so Sue, who gathers here with us, um, her pastor, she goes there to uh, Calvary Chapel, Golden Springs. And so we want to lift him up as he's, um, you know, up there in age. And so we just want to pray that he would continue to go um, without any, any heavy symptoms. Uh, we want to lift up um, the Rios family, um, Pastor Frank Rios and, and his daughters and his son, our pastor, Pastor Raymond. As today they um, uh, they 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 laid to rest um, Sister Susie, um, and so you know today there was closure uh, that has happened. And so how many of you know that um, that that kind of finalizes um, you know as you as you go through the process of, of, of just mourning, not to say that it's over, but it, it kind of seals it. And so now we want to lift up the family. Uh, we want to pray for Pastor Frank Rios, our pastor, um, his family, his mother, his father. And just lift them up for strength, you know, as they go continue to go through this time of, you know, just missing our dear sister. Um, but uh, but what 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 a what a beautiful thing to know um, that she is in the presence of the Lord. That's one thing our pastor was saying is is um, you know when you do a funeral like this, um, you don't have to worry as you are speaking uh, because you know where they're at. And so um, you know as she's going home to be with the Lord continue to lift up the family. Let's go before the Lord tonight. Lift up whatever needs you may have sent over as well. 
Um, we want to pray for just the word of the Lord tonight. Um, that God would minister to to our hearts tonight. Amen. Yes. And that uh, we would open up our hearts. We want to lift up Sister Espy as well, and um, and just pray uh, just for healing um, upon upon her body, and that God would just touch her, our, our, our dear sister who congregates uh, with us there at the city of Baldwin Park. So um, let's go before the Lord tonight, and afterwards, um, just by faith, just begin to thank Him for whatever it is you're believing God for tonight. Father, we, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we thank you. Um, Lord, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that God, uh, that even during these trying times um, in, in, in our culture, in our lives, and all around us, Lord, um, that we are able to call upon the name of the Lord, and that, Father, you are our refuge, and you are our strength, you are our help, um, you are, Lord, our everything tonight. And so, Father, every need uh, that is represented within this live stream and with everybody that has sent in their request, everything that I have voiced, Lord, we commit into your hands. And Father, we pray for your divine favor. We pray for your, your hand, God, um, Lord, to just push back the darkness, um, to just push back, Lord God, the assaults and the accusations of the enemy. Lord, I pray that tonight that you would build the faith of your people, that you would strengthen us and encourage us, Lord, through the power of your word, God. That tonight that your word would accomplish everything, Lord God, uh, that it is set out to do tonight, Lord God. As we navigate through your word, direct us, speak to us, challenge us, um, correct us, Lord God, rebuke us. Whatever it is that you need to do to our lives tonight, Lord, speak for our ears are open, God, and we are listening to the voice of the Lord. Father, we love you, we bless you, and we honor you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Well, if you do have your, your Bibles tonight, um, I want you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. 1 Samuel, chapter number 17, and verses number 26 through 37. 1 Samuel 17, chapter 26. 37. I'm going to begin reading here and just go ahead and follow along and, uh, and then we'll get into the word of the Lord tonight. 1 Samuel 17, 26-37. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. And now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why do you come down here? And why with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the inheritance of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? And then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. And now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from the mouth, and when it, was, and when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Tonight, I want to talk with you about facing the challenging giants in your life today. 
the giants that have come to call you out, the, the giants in your life represent the things that when they come before you or when they're exposed before you, they, they bring fear to your life. They, they are things that in the natural, um, they are unbeatable. But as we shortly look into the story here, um, I want you to understand um, that when you go to battle against the giants in your life, that the battle does not belong to you, but the battle belongs to the Lord. And so in this particular story, what is happening is Goliath is there and he, the Bible says that the army of the Philistines and the army of Israel are on two different mountaintops. And in the middle of them is a valley. And so these, these armies are at constant battle with one another. They're, they're constantly engaging in battle. And in chapter 17, as you open up with it, it talks about Goliath, who was the champion of the Philistines, how he comes out and he walks down to the valley and he begins to call out the army of God. And he begins to say to the army of the Lord that here you are and, and here we are going against each other, but why don't we just make this simple? Why don't you just send somebody down to fight me? And if they beat me, then we will become your servants. And if I beat him, then you will become our servants. And what it meant by beating is killing. And so the giant would come before the army of Israel. The Bible says 40 days, 40 days in the morning and in the evening, this giant, this this man, this warrior would come before the army of God and would constantly harass them and, and just begin to, to, to call them out to express his desire to bring destruction to the army of the Lord. And so this would go on. And the Bible says that there was no response from the army of God. There was no response from the children of the Lord. That they were not prepared. They, were, they, 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 did, they did not have the courage to stand before this giant. Then as you continue to read the story, it talks about David, who at this time is just a, a young shepherd boy. He had not been trained in the art of war. He did not have his own particular armor. He wasn't a, a, a man of war in the sense of organized warfare. But he was a man that understood what it was to fight against something where the odds were against you. And so the Bible says that David's father, Jesse, tells him to go and to check on his brothers because David had, there was a total of eight of them, and David had three older brothers who happened to be in the army at this time, and they're standing there next to Saul. Saul is leading the army. And so the Bible says on this particular day that David's father Jesse sends him with some food, some preparations of meals to bring before his, his brothers and to bring before the army. And understand this, that it wasn't just by accident or by coincidence that on this particular day that David was asked to come down to the battlefield. Not knowing that what was going to happen that day uh, is that they were going to experience uh, the mighty hand of God, uh, that the anointing of God and the empowerment of God would fall upon an individual who was available at this moment uh, and who would see the army of the enemy coming in and, and trying to pursue the army of God. And it would fill a young man. And sometimes all God is looking for is a man or a woman or an individual that has passion and zeal and has enough faith to stand upon the promises of God and know, not today, devil. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defile the army of the living God? And so the Bible goes on to say that David is there and he is inquiring. He is wondering, man, what's going on here? Here is this young, ruddy shepherd boy who comes and he's unarmed. He doesn't have armor. He comes with a staff and he comes with a sling. 
And he doesn't know that he is prepared to go to battle with all that he has come with. And so he's there. And, and as I begin to read this story, I can only begin to understand what is going through David's mind, what is going through the mind of this young man who is so full of faith as he walks out there and he knows the power of God, he's seen the power of God, he's experienced the power of God, and he walks into this situation and it brings him to a place of feeling himself with a passion and a desire to do something about what was happening at this moment and at this time. And I challenge you today uh, that when the giants come against your life, uh, that you got to be filled with a passion and a zeal and a desire to stand up against the giants of your life and do something about it. And so David, in this story, inquires to the army, what's going on here? What happens to the individual? Listen to the voice of this young man. Man, what happens to the individual that takes and receives the challenge and not only receives the challenge, but goes down and destroys that giant? And the Bible says that the group of men respond by saying, he will get a daughter of the king. He will be filled with gold and blessings and he will never have to pay taxes for the rest of his life. Wow. That is a great possession. That is a great prize to have to a young warrior boy. And so the Bible says that as soon as David does that, that his eldest brother comes and confronts him and says, man, what are you even doing here? It's something, isn't it, when the person that feels that they are so dignified and the person that feels that they know how to respond and react to the situations of life gets put out by the new convert fire by that new person that just comes to the kingdom and doesn't know about religion and doesn't know about church politics. But all they know about, man, is the kingdom of God and the power of God. And they don't know how to act like a Christian. They don't know how to do things the right way. But what they do have on their side is the fire of God, the faith of God, and the zeal and the power of God moving and operating in their life. And so sometimes what happens is the older Christians that have been around for a while but aren't doing nothing. They begin to get upset with that new convert fire. Look out, old convert, because a new convert is on the rise. He's rising up, and he's ready to conquer the giants that you're not ready to conquer. Ooh, come on. It's what happens when the power and the fire of God begins to move in an individual. Mm. Just because you've been saved for a while, but you've got no fire. And you're dead on the inside. On. You're watching all this indignation happen all around you. You're watching the enemy come uh, against the church of God, the body of Christ, as you sit back and do nothing. And the new convert, that new person, that person that just got saved, uh, that's excited for the things of God, uh, man, they're looking and they're saying, man, when are we going to do something? When are we going to make a move on the enemy? And that's what's happening in this story. And so David does something very interesting here after he inquires about what will, what will be given to the individual that conquers this giant, and his brother comes and rebukes him. And you know what David does? The Bible says he turns to another group of guys and says, hey, by the way, man, what, what happens to the person that destroys the enemy? And so what David is doing is he is, he, is, he is setting a table. He's getting the word out, and it actually worked. Because now there's talk amongst the army of God. There's talk amongst the ranks, and everybody's afraid, and everybody's looking and saying, hey, man, well, this guy's willing to go, let's send him. And so word gets to Saul. And so Saul comes back, and he confronts David, and he begins to talk to David about what he's inquiring about. And Saul says, man, 
But you can't do this. You're nothing but a shepherd boy. <laughs> and David begins to share with Saul that I don't do this in my own power. And he begins to tell him there was a time as I was out there as a shepherd and a bear came and a lion came and they came to take my sheep. And under the power of God, I took that bear and I took that lion by its beard and I destroyed it. And the same way God gave the lion and the bear into my hands is the same way he will give this uncircumcised Philistine. And so Saul says, all right, we've got to take her. As much as he's looking at the situation, I don't think anybody thought that David was going to win this battle. Nobody thought David was going to win this battle. They were sending him in as a lamb to be slaughtered. He was going to be the scapegoat. And so I'm wondering, was, was Israel finally coming to the place that, that this giant is too big? We can't handle the enemy. And so why don't we just send this young boy? We know that Goliath is going to kill him. We know that Goliath is going to destroy him. And so then what's going to happen is it's going to be just like back in the Egyptian days when we were under the slavery of Egypt. Because remember, Goliath said, if I kill the person you send to me, then you guys will have to bow down and be our servants and you will serve us. And so the army of God comes to the place where they're finally willing to accept the fact that they are going to be defeated and they will have to sit under the ownership of the Philistine army. But this young boy, this young convert, this young man with the fire of God says, not on my watch, it ain't going to happen. And so Saul says, David, if you're going to go to battle, and in their mind, what are they thinking? Okay, we're going to go back into a place of slavery. But it's okay because it's better than living in fear. It's better than, that's, that's what the enemy would say. It's better to be a slave than to live in fear, but you should not be living in fear. And so the Bible says that Saul gives David his armor. And David puts this armor on. And if you remember when Saul was anointed king, the Bible says that he was head and shoulders above everybody else. Saul was a big guy. He was a tall guy. And so the armor that Saul gives David, David puts it on, and he's probably walking in it and clanking in it, and it's heavy, and he cannot operate in somebody else's armor with somebody else's weaponry. And so the Bible says that David says, you know what, man, Charlie, I can't do this. This, I, I have not trained in this. I, this is foreign to me. Just let me come with the tools that God has already given his staff, and his sling. And so the word of God goes on to say that David would go to battle against the enemy. And as he begins to pursue the giant, as David begins to go down there, Goliath says, What am I, a dog? That you come at me with a stick? Picture this, visualize this, understand this. David is coming with a staff, a stick. That's all he has in his hand. The Bible says that he picks up five smooth stones from the river, from the brook, puts it in his pouch, and he has a sling in his hand. Here is this giant, here is this enemy that has been trained from youth. And if you read about his size and the size of his armor, you begin to realize that this is an impossible circumstance in the natural and the Bible says that David begins to run towards him and says, not only am I going to destroy you today, but I'm going to, I'm going to chop your head off. <laughs> wow. Almost seems comedy to the people that were present on this day. Here is the army of Israel probably just waiting for David to get destroyed. Here is the Philistine army waiting for David to get destroyed. And the Bible says that David runs at him and with one shot hits him in the middle of his head with a stone with such force that it knocks him to the ground, killing him. Then David runs up to him, takes his sword and cuts off his head and then parades it around town. Something very interesting about this battle here is the fact that it was a giant and it was something in his life that could not be defeated. 
in his own power. I want to take a few thoughts from this story here and find out what are some of the things that we can use in our life as we prepare to battle against the giants that we may face. The giants that come against trying to destroy your marriage. The giants that say you're losing your kids. The giants that, that say you're going to fail. The giants that say your life is a mistake. The giants that say you don't have a bright future. Sometimes we have to stand up and face these giants with the same tactics that God had given David. The first thing I want you to look at with me in this story is that you have to plug in to the source of power. You have to learn and understand that when you face something, that you're not facing it on your own or in your own abilities or by your own power. Listen to what David says in 1 Samuel 17, 37. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go then, and the Lord be with you. David understood that as he was going to battle, this is what separated him from everybody else that was on that battlefield. This is what separated him from that, was that he realized and he understood that his power did not come from himself. There are five things that I want to look at with you tonight. As David picked up five stones, there are five things that I want to look at. David picked up five stones to destroy the giant. Now, the things that I'm going to share with you tonight do not literally represent these five stones. That's not what I'm saying here tonight, that these, these represent the... I'm just saying in our life, as we face our enemy, there are five things that we can utilize that will help us to encourage us to stand against the giant. Because if you're going to beat the giant, you have to be willing to stand against it. The problem is many times it, is that people see a problem, people see an issue, people see a giant in their life, and they want to do what the army of God had done for all of these 40 days. And they want to run away. They don't want to deal with the situation. But there are things in our life that if we look at five particular things, it will help us to stand. Because standing against the problem that is of giant proportion is just half the battle. You have to be at least willing to stand against your enemy rather than run. The first thing I want to look at tonight as we choose our weapons is we have to look at the stone of our faith from past victories. Listen to what David says. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the, of the Philistines. Remembering, having the remembrance of old victories will prepare you to have enough faith to know if God has done it before, the Lord will do it again. And so for me in my life, that's a very big part and it ought to be a very big part in your life as well. Because there are times in our life that we were left desolate and broken and we were hopeless and there was no hope for the situation that we were in. And when we look back at our past and we look back at old victories, we literally see the hand of Almighty God raising us up out of the burnt ashes of life and building something beautiful and looking at past victories and realizing that the God that delivered me in the past will continue to deliver me in the future because because there are some giants in our lives of the past that we have overcome. Amen. And just like David in this story, this is what encouraged him. This is what helped him to understand that God will go before me. See, as David was there and he was a shepherd and he was carrying over the flock, I wonder how many people, listen, listen to, to, to the character you have Listen to the character you have on the way you deal with situations. And it will speak a lot about how God is capable of using you in the future. You see, to some people, watching all of these sheep and watching a lion or a bear come and grab one may not seem to 
be such a big deal. Some people would sit back and say, I'm not willing to put my life on the line for this or for that. But we look at the character in David's life. And he was not even willing to give up one. This is something, a responsibility that he was given. This was a task that he was given. And so a lot of times in your own life, when you look at the responsibilities and the tasks that you've been given in the kingdom of God, and the way you look at those situations, do you look at it as if it's not such a big deal? Ah, it doesn't really matter. Or do you look at it, does your character go into things and say, whatever I do, whatever I'm willing to put my heart into, I'm going to give my everything all the way to the end. Everything matters. This is where character is developed. This is where you begin to realize and understand the character of your life. Is how do you deal with the things that seem to be smaller? Because the way you deal with these things will say a lot about what you will develop into the character of David's life as he sat there and wasn't willing to allow the enemy as big as a lion was, as big as a bear was. David understood that what he had been called to do as he does what he's doing, he does it unto the Lord. Very important. And so he looked to the faith that he had from past victories. How about the stone of God being your refuge? Psalm 57.1 says, Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Psalm 59, 16 says, But I will sing of your strength in the morning. I will sing of your love, for you are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. Do you understand that God is your refuge? He is that safe place. That when you are under the shadow of God's almighty wing. There is no safer place to be. And you know what I've come to realize is that when you face giants in your life, if you have not developed a relationship with Christ and the giant shows up unexpectedly, you are not prepared. You don't know how to go to that place of refuge because you have not developed relationship with God. What happens too many times is people wait until a big trial comes and then they want to try and dig deep. But you have to begin to build these trenches when things are going good so that when the overwhelming disasters of life and the giants of life come knocking on your door, you have a place to dig and a place to find refuge in the presence of Almighty God rather than having nothing and then at any given moment trying to snap your finger and call down faith from God. It's something that is developed over a period of time. The trenches that you're digging now, as you begin to pursue the Lord, will prepare you for when you face that giant. The stone of priority. Listen to what 1 Samuel 17, 46 says. This day... Will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel? Priority. David didn't say, you know what, man? Let me go train a little bit. Let me, let me watch him a little bit. and Maybe I'll come back tomorrow and deal with this. Or maybe next week. David says, man, I, I, I see... That there's a call. I, I see that there's a situation. I see there's something that can be done. And David doesn't wait on it. But he prioritizes and he says, This day. And so if you're going to face giants and, and you're going to conquer giants in your life, then as soon as you see it, 
begin to raise its ugly head. You need to begin to take flight. You need to begin to, to prepare yourself to come against that enemy, to charge against that enemy, to not allow him to continue and grow, to continue and growl, to continue and call you out, to continue and pressure you with fear. But as soon as you see that giant of a situation arise and try to come against you, you need to confront it and deal with it rather than run from it. Which is exactly what David did. The stone of having a passion and a zeal. 1 Samuel 17, 32 says, And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Then 1748 says, And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Do you have passion in your heart? For the kingdom, do you have passion and zeal and fire for the things of God? You have to. If you're going to, to face your enemy, you have to have passion. You have to have zeal. You have to have fire. You have to have desire burning on the inside for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has to matter to you. See, it's not just all about you or me. It's not about us as individuals. When we look at, at the big picture, we've got to begin to understand that it's about the kingdom of God. And when you have passion for the kingdom of God, and the enemy rises up, and the darkness comes to try and push us away, that we actually begin to push darkness back as we serve the Lord and we pursue Him with passionate hearts. God's looking for you to stir up some passion. That's what it was. See, the army was dead, man. The army was dead. There was no fight in them. There was no fire in them. Because what they were up against seemed to be an impossible task. And they weren't looking at it. There was no fire burning inside them. The saying, man, we can take this giant. As a matter of fact, David says, man, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? Man, who is this? What are you people doing? Who is this guy? And why are we not doing anything about it? Why are you not doing anything against the giants in your life? The stone persistence remaining persistent never giving up Genesis 32 26 says and he said let me go for the day breaks and he said I will not let you go unless you bless me this is the story of Jacob wrestling with the Lord remaining persistent staying persistent in your attack against the giant against your life not just saying, okay, I tried, and it didn't work. I tried, and I'm still struggling with this. I tried, and I still can't conquer this. But remaining persistent in your fight and in your battle against the enemy of your life. Just as Jacob wrestled with God and says, I'm not willing to let you go unless you bless me. Do not be distracted or disturbed by the giants in your life. Let me tell you the whole purpose of a giant. However that comes, whatever form that is, however it attacks your life, whether it's a, a, a situation, a circumstance, a person, um, a habit, whatever it is that you just can't seem to conquer. It's number one purpose is to bring fear against your life. That is the purpose of the giant. As a matter of fact, listen to what happens in 17 verse 11 
and 17 verse 24 in what we just read in this chapter. In 17, 11, it talks about the giant coming down and he's calling out the people. And the Bible says that the army was afraid, including Saul. And so the purpose of this giant, the purpose of the trial, the purpose of the situation that stands before you is to just completely bring fear against your life. And some of you are living in fear and there's a giant and he's constantly calling you out. And fear is the opposite of faith. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Then it continues to go on in 1724, and it talks about the hearts of the men, because of the giant, were so afraid. And so the giants in your life have one purpose, and it's to put you at a place where you are living in constant fear. What if this happens? What if that happens? And, and, and some of you, that, that's all that goes through your mind, man. You're just living in fear, and all you worry about is what if this happens? What if that happens? Man, you need to learn to conquer the giants in your life because that giant keeps calling you out because he knows that he's effective. And you need to be like this young boy, David, or a young woman, or whoever you are out there. And you need to begin to rise up and fill yourself with fire and passion and desire and remember the trials of old and the victories of old and know that God is going to do it again. right now this virus has you in fear now listen I'm, I'm not some dummy that, that thinks that this virus ain't real and just do whatever you want no I take precaution man I know it's real I'm not trying to get it I don't want it but we have to refuse to live our lives in fear as this giant stands out there calling you out Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God? When you're prepared to face the giants in your life, don't allow other people to distract you from your goal, from your purpose, from your pursuit. Some of you, you need, you need to pursue that giant, man. It calls you out, then it runs away. It calls you out, then it runs away. But it's there every morning, just like this giant was, 40 days and 40 nights. And it's there, and you get up in the morning, and it's calling you out. And you're going to bed at night, and it's calling you out. The Bible says in verse 28 that when David's older brother heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom? He was trying to discourage him from fighting the giants in his life. Again, that older person has been around for a while. Now listen, there are older people in our life that have been around for a while and they can speak wisdom into your life. But be very cautious to who you're listening to. Be very cautious to who you're listening to. Because some people do not have your intentions looking out for your best intentions. Some people are just jealous of what you may accomplish and you just may pass them up. That was David's brother's situation here. He was trying to distract him, from, trying to stop him from wanting to pursue the giant that was coming against the army of God just because he wasn't willing to, just because he didn't have the faith to stand up and do something. He didn't want nobody else to either. And there's many Christians that are like that today, just because they're not willing to do anything, just because they're not willing to witness, just because they're not willing to go out and lead somebody to God, just because they're not willing to do something for the kingdom, they don't want nobody else doing it either. Don't allow people to discourage you. Stay focused. On the Lord. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. This day the Lord will hand you over to me and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel.
think about that. The confidence that David had in the Lord. Today, <laughs> the Lord will hand you over to me. And the people will know that there is a God in Israel. When you conquer the giant in your life, what can the giants in your life be? What are the problems? What are the issues? What are the situations? What are the things that constantly come knocking on your heart and messing with you? The Bible says that what David did is as he killed the enemy, as he killed the giant, that the giant was there on the ground and that David went and he took out the giant's sword and he cut off his head. And so some of you, you can't seem to overcome some of the giants in your life because you keep on going and bringing it back. Whatever that, whatever that is to you, whatever that means to you, whatever sort of addiction it could be, whatever sort of giant of an addiction that is constantly locking on the door of your heart, and it's because you never have learned to destroy it. And so David goes here, and he takes the sword of the enemy, and the Bible says that, that he cuts his head off. Now, I don't know if you can fully understand what that means, how barbaric it is, how violent that is, but David understood that this evil must be be completely destroyed and some of you you are not completely destroying the giants in your life and they keep resurrecting they keep getting back up and they keep conquering you mm. and you find yourself conquered by the thing that god has empowered you to conquer Come on. and it's conquering you and you're living with the same old thing uh, year in and year out. Uh, I don't know what that giant is. Uh, I don't know what it is in your life. Uh, it could have been something that you were brought up with. Uh, something that you've carried all your life. And God says, my son, uh, my daughter, I have empowered you to conquer that thing in your life. But you got to be willing to cut it at its root. You know what David does? <laughs> Do you, again... The character of this young boy. He's not just satisfied with cutting off the head. He's carrying it everywhere he goes. Wherever he goes, he has this severed head as a reminder that when something opposes, something comes in opposition of God, and there are things in your life, and you're allowing them in your life, and they are completely opposing to the Word of God. God is not happy with it. God's Word is against it. And you keep on taking it. You keep on carrying it. You keep on allowing it into your life. And God says, I want you to destroy it. And so David would carry the head of this uncircumcised Philistine wherever he was going. How do I know that? Because this is what happened. Saul, continue reading the story. I mean, at some point, David gets rid of it. He don't carry it for the rest of his life. But during this period, during this crusade in his life, where he destroys the giant, the Bible says that as Saul sees this happening, remember, more than likely, read the story, more than likely, as, as you begin to understand the text of this story, what, what is happening is Israel is literally probably preparing to become servants to the Philistines. Nobody expected this young boy to run out there with his staff and with a slingshot and that he was going to kill that giant. And so Saul says, who was that? And the, the, the individual that was with Saul says, I, I don't know who that is, but I'll find out. And so the Bible says that he finds out and he tells him who he is, and that Saul summons David. And read the story. The Bible says David shows up to Saul when Saul calls him, and guess what he has? He has the severed head in his hand. And he's standing there, and, 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 and he's 
probably parading it around and he's carrying it around and he's showing it as a testimony to everybody that doubted that God was about to deliver the giant into his hand. And so I want you to know tonight that God is about to deliver a giant into your hand. I don't know what's been controlling you. I don't know what's been leading you. I don't know what's been breaking you down and keeping you out. But I know this, that God wants to deliver that giant into your hand and give you victory. Just like David, that thing that was once a giant controlling you. Do you understand that that giant controlled the entire army of God? He controlled them with fear. And so some of you tonight, you have been controlled. That, that giant in your life, that that problem, that issue, that situation, that bad habit, that addiction, it, it has controlled your life. And God wants you to sever it so that it becomes a reminder of something that is now lifeless. That is something that is now powerless against you. Understand, that was once the giant that controlled the army with fear and now it was powerless. Because it had been destroyed completely. And some of you, you need to completely destroy that giant in your life. I know what it's like to have a giant control me. Control every aspect of me. And I know what it's like to, under the power of God, See, when David killed the enemy, he realized it wasn't in his own power. And some of you are trying to break chains, and you're trying to loosen shackles, and you're trying to do it your way. You're trying to do it your way. You're trying to do it in your power. You're trying to systematically, you know, put things together and figure it out in your mind. And what you need is the power of God. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, to direct you, to break chains in your life. Because I'll tell you this, that's what happens. In our own ability, we are not capable. In our own ability, we can't set ourselves free. But when we're walking under the power and under the anointing of Almighty God, we can see the mighty hand of God move. And you can definitely take down every giant that stands before you. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight in reverence to the Lord. As always, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, give an opportunity tonight to maybe some of you that are listening um, to get your heart right with the Lord. And, uh, and I'll tell you, man, with God on your side, um, you know, there's, uh, there's nothing uh, that we're not capable of conquering. You know, that, that's just the truth. Um, there, are, there, are, there are so many giants that we face. And man, when God's on our side and we're led by the Holy Spirit, um, the Lord just gives us great victories. And, and some of the most awesome victories are when we battle against a giant and, and it looks uh, like um, we can't do it. And then God says, that's right, you can't do it. Uh, but you're not going in this alone. The battle belongs to me. And when we take uh, that, that, that second seat and we say, Lord, lead the battle here. Um, God can do some great things in a person, in a man or a woman, individuals that are willing to just surrender it to the Lord. And so tonight, I want to lead you tonight. Maybe uh, maybe your heart um, isn't committed to the Lord tonight. Maybe you're not surrendered to God. Maybe Jesus Christ isn't your Lord and Savior. Um, I want to give you an opportunity tonight by just simply repeating a prayer that I'm going to pray right now and uh, and just believing in your, in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then after that, you just begin to begin to read the Word of God, um, begin to connect with, um, with other Christians, uh, allow discipleship to come into your life, and God will begin to develop you and just build you uh, into a strong man or woman of God. And so tonight, if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight, Lord, just a sinner, God, uh, in need of a Savior, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that tonight, that Lord God, as I surrender my heart to you um, that you would come and you would just dwell inside me 
Lord, um, I believe that you, you died on that cross for my sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, God. Fill me, uh, that, Lord, that I would be empowered, God, um, to live for you, Lord, all the days of my life. And so, Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, direct me. I pray this tonight in Jesus' name. So if you said that prayer tonight, amen, I just encourage you, reach out to us, reach out to a Christian, and, 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 and begin to um, share what you did tonight, amen, um, that you gave your heart to the Lord. And so um, tonight as we prepare to close in a word of prayer, we're going to just close in prayer tonight. And I just really want to challenge you, man, um, to stand up, stand up against that giant. Don't run from that giant. Stand up against that giant. Know that you are not walking in your own power, but you are walking empowered by the hand of Almighty God. God, God has anointed you, ordained you, set you apart. He has empowered you with his spirit um, so that you can fight that battle with God going before you. Amen. Don't be afraid. Father, we come before you tonight, and we thank you tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the story um, of, of David, God, how just this young, young shepherd boy, Lord, who was willing to stand and fight with passion, with zeal, Lord God, remembering his victories of old, Lord God. And so, Father, I pray that tonight that you would that you would raise up some new men, some new women, God, that are willing to stand on the forefront of the battle and say, if nobody else is willing to do something against the enemy that is pursuing the kingdom of God, that we will stand and fight. Raise them up, Lord God. Bring men and women that are willing to be committed, loyal, uh, surrendered to the kingdom of God, Father. Raise them up, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we just ask you, have your way. Encourage Encourage your people tonight, Lord, by the power of your word. Lord, we bless you, we honor you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you, amen. We thank you uh, for tuning in with us tonight. Don't forget, tomorrow, uh, Praise Chapel, we will be there at the church. Um, hope to see you there, and if not, uh, we will definitely see you Sunday morning. God bless you.